Hi, I'm Dan Jackson from Crestron's Research and Development Department. AV Framework is simple and powerful. It provides out-of-the-box functionality and allows you to set up room systems right from the web-based configuration tool, so you don't need any programming or custom UI design. You can also save standard room types and deploy them over the network. So whether you're doing one room, 100 rooms, or even 1,000 rooms, you just set it up once and then push them out over the network. And you can update your systems over the network as well. You can swap out products without having to reconfigure or program. It also automatically generates a touch UI, so you get a clean, consistent, easy to use experience in every room. AV Framework is built into every DMPS3 all-in-one presentation system and works with 7 and 10 inch TSW touchscreens, MP B10 push button controllers, air media, connected cable caddies, Crestnet occupancy sensors, and the most popular Blu-ray players and displays. So let's take a typical system and see how easy it is to set up. For our example, I'm using a DMPS3 4K 100C. I want a couple of cable caddies so I can connect laptops. We want to accommodate both legacy VGA and modern HDMI devices. We also want an air media, so we can instantly present wirelessly from both tablets and other mobile devices. Let's add a Blu-ray player, and finally, an occupancy sensor for automation and to collect room usage data. Once you get all the hardware connected, you just go to the web tool and set everything up. So let's take a look at how AV Framework can be configured with any web browser. Over the next few minutes, we will complete a system configuration using only a web browser. There's no programming, compiling, or special tools needed to deploy a system using AV Framework. Let's start by logging in to the web interface of the unit so we can begin our configuration. Once we log in, we reach the status page. As you can see, AV Framework already knows the specific processor or system that we're working with, as well as its associated input-output capability. Many items are pre-populated to make the process even easier. Let's go ahead and begin configuring our system. The device page allows me to add or remove physical hardware that will be associated with the system. As you can see, the system has an option for a touch panel as well as a connect it for each of the four inputs to our system. For the sake of our demonstration today, we're going to use one of the connect its, so we'll go ahead and remove the three that won't be used for this particular system. Let's now add the devices that we just unboxed in the previous step. First item will be an Air Media. So we can select Air Media, give it a friendly name, and then select the model in question. We can also provide the IP ID that we'll use for communication. As you can see at the top of the page, as soon as I begin configuration changes, the system will track, letting me know that my system is currently offline, and I can either activate the configuration that I'm currently working on, or I can revert to my previous configuration. Once we complete our system configuration, you'll see how easy it is to activate this new configuration. Let's go ahead and add another device. Let's add a button panel. And in this case, we'll add an MPB10, and we'll connect it via Crestnet. Let's also add an occupancy sensor. We'll add a Crestnet-based sensor. Give it a Crestnet ID. And in this case, I'm going to set a custom timeout. I'm going to say that 10 minutes after inactivity, Let's go ahead and turn the system off or have the system turn off by itself. There's another option here as well for routing default video. 
So when motion is detected, I can have a particular source automatically routed. In this case, Air Media might be my best choice to do so. Finally, let's add a DM receiver. And last, let's add a Blu-ray as a transport device. I can even assign the IR port where we'll be controlling the unit. In this case, I'll be controlling it directly from the DMPS. Now that all my devices have been added, let's move on to configuring the switcher itself. As you can see, the page provides information on the various inputs for this particular type of control system. For our particular scenario, we're going to use our connect it to control sources connected to input 1 VGA and then input 5 HDMI. And you can see here that the connected is listed as the device. I'm going to go ahead and disable the VGA inputs that won't be used in this particular system as well as one HDMI input that we won't use in this configuration either. Let's place our Air Media unit, as well as our Blu-ray player, on their respective inputs. And then let's add some friendly names as they appear on the touch panel or user interface. We can even change the icons that appear on the touch panel. So in the case of Blu-ray, let's choose the Blu-ray logo. Air Media, we can leave as the Crestron Swirl. Let's find a laptop icon for VGA, as well as HDMI. Now that we've added all of our inputs, we can, can, can even check to see how the connected device is configured. You can choose based on buttons, what the primary channel is, that it'll look for VGA Second, look for HDMI first. I can modify that. I can even choose the location where it's plugged into on the switcher. Let's scroll down and look at our output. In this case, we know that we have a DM receiver as an endpoint. Change to a friendly display name. And our icons can stay as it is as a monitor. Our switcher configuration is complete. So let's save these changes and then we can move on to activating this configuration. As I mentioned, it's very easy to activate a new configuration using Crestron's AV framework. Once we have our changes complete, simply select Activate Configuration. Once our configuration is complete, we can log back into the system again. And you can see that our status page now reflects which inputs in particular we've selected to use for this particular design. Let's go back to our configuration page to see how easy it is to export or import configuration settings. As you can see from the top of the page, once we activated our configuration, our system is now online. If I'd like to take a copy of the configuration files from this system and move them to another system or even back them up, I can click download configuration, a zip file containing the associated configuration files is now located on my machine. When we open that particular zip file, you'll find that we have a number of XML files. That's how easy the configuration is. Not only can we back these files up on our machine locally, transport them to another system to repeat the configuration process, or integrate with Fusion for deployment and backup as well. Let's take a look at two additional features of the new AV framework. Our system provides our status information, but it also provides logging information. We have a complete history of all activity from a user standpoint in the system, where we can easily see what changes were made, devices going on and offline, as well as simple changes like volume control. 
We can even choose to download these logs for viewing offline if desired. Another element of AV Framework is ease of configuration with Fusion. By going to our system setup and selecting Fusion, we can enable a Fusion connection that will change our configuration. And now we have the ability to integrate with Fusion from a scheduling standpoint, as well as a simple way to report metrics from this particular system back up to either our Fusion on-prem server or even Fusion Cloud. All of the metrics are pre-configured based on the system capabilities, so there's no additional work to do. Let's take a moment to look at the user interface that AV Framework creates. As you can see, I have a home page, my hard buttons on the TSW panel, but specifically my sources. So all of the names that I entered via the web interface appear on the panel along with the associated icons that I selected. I even have a red or green status to indicate that device currently being connected or online with the system. AV Framework creates a clean, repeatable interface that is easy for customers to use. If AV Framework doesn't suit your needs, you can always begin the project with Crestron Studio, which has the ability to create the same look and feel as you would have with AV Framework. So a seamless transition for users as they move from room to room within an enterprise. As you can see, in the span of less than 10 minutes, we created a fully functional system that didn't require any programming. And that's how easy it is to use AV Framework. You can get rooms up and running, update them over the network, and generate UIs without any programming or compiling. It's all done for you right through the web-based tool. For rooms that are more custom and go beyond the scope of AV Framework, use Crestron Studio. You keep the same AV Framework functionality and user experience, but you can add more components, custom functionality, and even add your logo without any code or complex UI design. It couldn't be easier.